Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. We're dedicated to delivering quality auto parts, expert customer service, fast and free shipping, all backed by our 100% satisfaction guarantee. We've created thousands of videos to help you install our parts with confidence, and that saves you time and money. So visit us at 1AAuto.com, your trusted source for quality auto parts. In this video, we're going to be working with our 2012 GMC Acadia. We're going to show you how to remove and replace the front grill. If you like this video, please click subscribe. We have a ton more information on this and many other vehicles. And if you need this grill for your car, you can follow the link down in the description over to 1AAuto.com. Here are the items you'll need for this repair. Unclip the tabs that secure the floor mat. You only really have to undo these two, and then you can just fold it over and out of the way. This cover is where your battery is located. To get it out more easily, you'll want to lift up and snap this plastic cover off of the seat rail. Remove this T20 Torx screw here. We're going to do that with a Torx socket, ratchet, and extension. Remove the screw from the cover. Lift the cover up and away. Remove the negative side of the battery with a 10 millimeter socket, ratchet, and extension. Remove the terminal from the battery. Place it out of the way. Remove these six plastic retainer pins here. We're going to use a flat blade screwdriver to lift up on the center portion of the pin here. And then keep your finger over it so it doesn't pop out. And lift up the plastic to release the pin. Once the last pin has been removed, lift up and remove your sight shield. Remove the six T20 Torx screws along the top of the grill and the corners of the bumper. We're going to use a Torx socket, ratchet, and an extension here. This job can easily be done on the ground, but we're going to raise and support our vehicle to make it easier to film and show you what's going on. Remove the two 10 millimeter bolts securing the bottom of the bumper. Use 10 millimeter socket and ratchet with an extension. Remove the seven T20 Torx screws. We have two on the bottom here and five running up along the back side of the bumper and the fender. Remove the eight plastic clips securing the inner fender well in. We have three in the top area here one over at the front in the middle, two down at the bottom, and these two at the back of the front portion of the liner at the bottom in the middle here. There's a few different ways to remove these style clips. I like to try to take a small flat blade screwdriver and work up the center part of the clip just a little. Once you get it up some, if you have the room to get in there with a pair of side cutters, you can sneak them underneath and then pry up evenly from both sides. Once the center's out, you can pop the lower portion out the same way. Remove 
remove the wheel liner. Pull out on the bottom portion here and pull down and forward to release the front half of the wheel well from the rear and sneak it out of the bottom. Our vehicle is equipped with these fender flares that we'll have to remove to remove the bumper without risking damaging this part. To do that, we have to remove the inner wheel well here. You can do this on the ground if you work the wheel and tilt it so you can reach in and access all the clips and screws, but it's easier to take the wheel off if you want to raise and support your vehicle like we have. Remove this retainer for the wiring harness to the wheel speed sensor, as well as this push pin at the bottom and the one in the top. Remove the six T20 Torx screws on the back side of the fender well. We'll use a Torx bit, ratchet, and extension for that. See, I'm using my left hand to put some pressure against the wheel well here because this last screw is all that's holding it in. So once we get that out, you can remove the rear half of the wheel well liner. These clips below the fender line, simply pop out of the bumper, while these six along the rest of the wheel well will need to be popped out very carefully with a pair of needle nose pliers. You can see that you have the two spread tabs on the back of this clip. You wanna squeeze those together carefully. They're just plastic. Squeeze them together, slide them through. This outer flare can be pretty brittle, so be sure not to force anything where you risk cracking and damaging the trim. Repeat these steps on the opposite side to remove the forward and rearward wheel well, as well as the fender flare on the outside. Disconnect the fog light and repeat this step on the opposite side. Have a friend hold the bumper while you remove the seven millimeter screws on the fender well side of the bumper. There's one on each side. Once we get one out, have your helper hold the side with the screw removed. Once you've removed the other one, you'll both grab the edge of the bumper pop the clips out and walk away with it. With your friends supporting the other side, remove your last seven millimeter screw, at which point you can both pull out on the top portion of the bumper. There you go. And remove it from the vehicle. Remove the two seven millimeter screws at the top of the grill with a socket and ratchet. Then using a pair of needle nose pliers, we'll pull down and collapse the pin on the retaining clips. As you straighten out the clips, carefully work the grill out of the bumper. Once all the tabs have straightened out, you can remove the grill from your bumper. Line up your new grill and push all the tabs back up until they snap into place. Reinstall your two seven millimeter screws. Line up your bumper with the help of a friend. Snap the clips in on the side of the bumper. This may take a little bit of force. And reinstall the seven millimeter screw on each side. Once you have one side installed, go around, line up the other side, and 
reinstall that seven millimeter screw as well. Once the two screws are in, the bumper is in secure enough that you don't have to have anyone hold it anymore. Line up the clips on the back of your fender flare with the holes inside of the fender and the bumper. They should snap back into place with just a little bit of pressure. Reinstall the rear portion of the wheel well liner. I like to start with the push clips because they're the fastest to put in to hold it in place. You have the one on the bottom, one at the top, and the retainer for our ABS sensor. Then we'll reinstall the six T20 torque screws on the back side of the liner. Reconnect the electrical connector to the back of the bulb and repeat this step on the opposite side. Reinstall the forward portion of the front inner wheel well liner. In this shot, the tire is on, but it can be done with the tire on or off of the vehicle. Once you have some holes lined up, you can start installing your eight push pins. Set them up like this. Install the bottom half and then pop the tab into place. Reinstall your seven T20 Torque screws. We'll start them a couple of threads by hand before we install them with our socket and ratchet. Reinstall the two 10 millimeter screws at the bottom of the bumper. Reinstall the six T20 Torx screws along the top of your bumper and grill. Reinstall the upper engine sight cover and the six plastic clips that hold it into place. Keep your keys handy in case this sets off your vehicle's car alarm and reconnect the negative side of the battery. Tighten up the 10 millimeter bolt. Can now reinstall the cover. And tighten down your T20 screw. Put the plastic cover back onto the seat rail. And snap it into place. Lay your floor mat back down. Re-engage the hold downs. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.